going out the road here. Just felt like taking a drive today, maybe stop here at Camping World. Some of you probably just cringed. Camping World? Don't ever buy from Camping World, right? Uh, there's actually somewhere else, a smaller outfit on out the road that uh, we're going to take a chance and stop by. I, somebody in the comments said that uh, a place called Lens in Blairsville, Pennsylvania sometimes has some a little bit, a little bit older, you know, used motorhomes for sale. It's more likely to be in my price range. So, uh, the Camping World, we have a Camping World really close to us here. I looked at their website this morning. Well, hang on, we'll, we'll get out here. Uh, wait till we get out here a second. In a quarter mile, turn left onto Chambers Road or Avenue. All right, all right, all right. Let's stop. Let's pull in here at our local Camping World. And they have just done a major renovation, uh, uh, an addition, I should say. And they've moved a lot of their inventory out to another location uh, just to make room to, have some room to work. So, uh, let me see here. Let's go up here a minute. Uh, they have travel trailers, fifth wheels, class C's, class A's, uh, and uh, here's here's some class C's over here. <laughs> look at those. Let's have a let's have a little look see here. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something about their their cheapest one here at the moment right now is kind of shocking. Okay. Alright, if any of you out there have looked at new ones anytime recently, they are so expensive. I'm sure these are all locked up. Yep, rightly so, I guess. Uh, they did just open up a little bit ago. Uh, so, at least this is a brand new one, a 2022. Uh, these shorties, uh, on their website, I think the shortest, uh, even the very, very short 22 foot ones, are like $85,000. And their cheapest one, and this might be it here, this might be a used, I think this is the one, a used 2018 was $74,999. Uh, let's just round that up by $1. Let's just call that $75,000. That's the, it's a, yeah, it has an inspection sticker on it. Yeah, that's the used 2018. $75,000. I hate to see, I'd hate to see, this is a little bit longer one. I'd hate to see what the price tag on this is. Uh, Camping World's not real good, good about, you know, posting a actual sticker somewhere that you can see. The, they want you to go in and they want you to start filling out paperwork and stuff. Yeah, man. That one's got a big slide. I think it's a bunk bunk beds. There's a shorty. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh Yeah, so even buying used here, that's seventy five thousand dollars. So obviously most of you probably realize that I'm not a rich man <laughs> and there's no way I'd ever consider taking on that kind of debt not on a motorhome that's a, no no Woo. all right well it's, they're pretty you know they're, they're they're pretty all right we're turned around and getting out of here that's yeah, and camping world you know i mean just like it's not all bad i i mean it is just the way it is the uh just like a lot of automobile uh dealers you know new car dealers if you look at their Turn used right onto pennsylvania 356 north if you look at their used inventory you know a lot of dealers uh just don't deal with a lot of used stuff. Feet, turn left onto Chambers Road or Avenue. Um, 
they don't deal with stuff that's very very old you know maybe up to five years old maybe even see a few that are ten but Turn left onto a, a lot of the older Avenue. come on you know older than that they just run them off to uh, car auctions they, they don't keep uh, older stuff on their lot continue on or Avenue for one and a half miles so it's kind of what goes well in the camping world but, yeah, we're going to get off the road here. My hopes is to sometimes you just get lucky and you go for a ride and you maybe see something in somebody's driveway with a for sale sign on it or a, a smaller used lot. Uh, sometimes you just got to get out in the field and, you know, beat feet around and see what's around. Uh, you know, I've been checking on uh, Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace, RVTrader.com. And I've really been trying to look and see what's around. Um, but I just felt like going for a ride today. I just wanted to get out. It's just, it just kind of a rainy, gloomy day. And I thought, eh, let's just go for a ride. Take a chance out this one place out here. Now, I could have called ahead. But again, I thought, we'll, we'll just ride out because you never know what you see on the way and we might take a different way back and maybe we'll come across to something. We've come all the way down on uh, Route 819, I think it is. Maybe it's 918. To, uh, we're down on, along the William Penn Highway, US Route 22. And uh, we haven't had any luck yet. But we gotta go out uh, a little bit to the east of here to Blairsville, out the lens, and hopefully we have a little bit of luck. This is one of those highways that has a lot of uh, car dealers, new and used, and some of them just kind of have some random vehicles too. And it's one of them strips where there's, you just see a lot of that. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. And there it is, you know, 335 a gallon. And you know what, not even, even in the van, you know, that hurts a little bit. <laughs> Ouch. I think the van has a 36 gallon tank and I ran it down to about a quarter tank. And yeah, does that seem about right? Uh, fortunately, this isn't one of those pumps. I hate it, you know, so many pumps are uh, set to automatically shut off it. Seventy-five dollars. So, yeah, if you got a bigger rig, a bigger tank, that's a pain in the butt. You can't even fill your tank up, you know. Right, Bella. <laughs> Maybe I should name the van, because <laughs> the bound. Of course, the bounder's name is Betty, and I've always said, you know. Old Betty has a drinking problem. <laughs> well, the van here, you know, she can drink a little too. Nothing like Betty, but. Continue on US 22 East for 16 miles. Put her down. I'm doing this all the way down here in Blairsville. Uh, a place up here on the right called Clems. Where is it? There it is. They got the, the pig on the roof. Clems Cafe. The best. They're probably just opening for lunch. Uh, I, can't, I can't believe I didn't stop her. If, if you're uh, from the area, western anywhere, well, anywhere in western Pennsylvania, uh, if you make your way to Blairsville, Clems has got to be the best barbecue, you know, this part of the state. It really, it's just fantastic. I can't believe I drove past it. <laughs> I might stop on the way back, I don't know. Alright, back to our mission. Okay, we're here, and I see our, a couple of RVs, and they appear to be a little bit older ones. Is 
have some old cars here too. Oh, there's a, a there's a coachman over there too. That's about the right size. Uh, and go out and look around at some of these. Wow, look at these some of these old cars too. Uh, an old Cadillac, a, um, some sort of Chrysler, old Trans Am or Firebird. Uh, was that a Plymouth or a Chrysler Cambridge? I don't know. Well, I don't think that's pretty cool stuff. Okay, here's a Coachman Leprechaun. This is the uh, this is like the perfect length. That is, I'd bet that's 26 foot. I think that's identical. That's like the identical. Oops, we're right along the highway. But that's like the identical length that the Tioga was. And I can tell from the rear windows that this has twin beds in the back. But, you know, that could be remodeled. Now, this is an older one like the Tioga. And I would be willing to go back this old. But, you know, it could use, there's a little bit of fading bit. I mean, the stripes aren't bad. The color's not bad. And I like these kind of uh, cab overs. Yeah, this needs a good scrubbing. These kind of cab overs, they actually kind of have this protective part on here. Uh, you see some of them just have a, an exposed seam. I think that's a better design. It's less prone to leaking. Uh, looks like they have the engine cover off in there. So uh, this one might not be in a uh, ready to go condition. And I bet it's locked. And that's a good thing. Uh, refrigerator, hot water tank, uh, fresh water fill. Let's see, and it has these protective things in the back corners. It doesn't look like it's ever been backed into anything. There's no rear damage. So, now this thing's buckling a little bit. Uh, and uh, a generator compartment. So, I don't know if there's a generator in there. Uh, I might ask about it. I might go inside and ask the guy about it but you know a good uh, a nice good bath here's the thing too i would actually prefer to get something newer uh i'll tell you this that the one i had was a 1987 and that was the last year for the carbureted engine so well it was an 88 but it was on an 87 chassis but so at 89 you know, a year later, they became fuel injected. And I think a year or two later, in the, the last year for this style of Ford, and I do prefer a Ford chassis. Uh, the last year they made this style, I think was 1991. And somewhere right in around there, they changed from the three-speed transmission to the four-speed transmission, which people tend to call them three-speed with overdrive. Uh, but I wouldn't be opposed to, you know, the older three-speed if it's a really, really good survivor, you know, like the Tioga was. Uh, that's, I mean, that's a possible candidate, really. I'd be interested to know why they have the engine cover off. My guess is they'd be probably fixing a exhaust leak. <laughs> and this is certainly newer. But this is not a candidate because uh, I see on the other side this side looks better but on the other side there was some bulging up around the cab area which means it certainly did leak so I don't care how nice uh, even if it's been repaired that damage is done this is 29 foot anyway it's a little bit long and it has some water damage so this one's out of the question right off the bat we're going to see what's up here Another Cadillac, another Cadillac, an old Ford. <laughs> Pretty cool stuff. Wow, wow here's another one very similar to the first bit. Ooh, this has got some weeds growing up around it. It still has the protective thing around it. It certainly needs a bath. Yeah, this one might be getting a little bit rougher than this one might be a little <laughs> it's got some rust spots going on. It's got some other issues going on. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, it might it might clean up okay. That would take certainly some scrubbing and some other stuff. It would have to be really chilly inside to, uh, to even be considered. And I do want to... Uh, yeah, no generator in the generator bay. So I do want something with a generator. The Tioga had the same thing. The, uh, it had a generator bay, but in these years, the generator was, wasn't so much standard equipment as it was, you know, it was an option. And because uh, the conduit, the wiring, and everything there to hook it up was there. But you could tell the generator had never been installed. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to shop until I find, that's going to be a must, a, a good running onboard generator. I don't know what the story is here. I'm going to tell you what, this one, here's what I look for too. When I'm looking online, you'd be surprised what you can tell by the pictures. These seams, now these are the exposed seams I'm, I was talking about. Now, these you can tell that, you know, people put extra, you know, gunk and stuff on them that they've leaked. You can tell this cab over, um, it sags. That whole, that whole top would need rebuilt. That, this one is shot. And there's bulging. I can see, I can see a bulge in the side. I can see where it's wavy down further. This, this thing is just, is ruined. It's done. It's garbage. Just this whole thing needs rebuilt. Sorry. Yeah, and this one being rough. But it does have it it does have a desirable floor plan. I can tell that right now. But I am gonna go and ask about that one over there. That's a pretty good survivor. And if it has the right floor plan up front, you know those twin beds in the back, those could always be removed and put a regular just one big bed back there. But that's one, it's you know, it's all nice and straight, not bowed and everything like that one. It's not all faded real bad. It looks like it's a pretty fair survivor. I, I think it's worth asking about. See how many miles are on it. Maybe have a look at the inside and see if it's even for sale. Or if it's just, it could be just here. Um, it's a repair center too. So it could be just somebody's that they want repaired. Well, the door is locked. Maybe I better go check, see what time it is. Maybe they're not open yet. I don't think they open until 10. Let's see what time it is. Oh, what time you got? Huh? <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Let me go around the other side. What, what do we? What do we got? Oh, it's 11:22. I wonder why nobody's here. Maybe I'll try calling the number. <laughs> okay, I did get a hold of Leonard, and uh, he's the owner. And he did say that this is for sale, but there's a sell pending. But he just hasn't had time to get to this and finish it up. Uh, and my guess was right in that the, um, you know, these are notorious for the rear exhaust manifold bolts popping out. And I mean, these things are heavy. They work hard going up big hills and towing and stuff. And those manifolds get hot and they're, they're known for having that issue that, you know, they got their, <laughs> they got their limit. So, uh, it's uh, unfortunately he said the sales pending that they're waiting on him he's he don't have it ready yet so i asked well if it falls through or something if i, I asked if i can call him back maybe in a week or you know or two and see where they're at with it but i just wish the blinds are pulled i can't even see what the floor plan is like i mean i already know from them back windows that it has the twin beds uh both doors are locked and and maybe this isn't on second thought i've just changed my mind can you see? it looked all straight uh it's worth looking that closer i think you can probably see that bow in the wall so it's probably leaked up here i can see another kind of bow coming out here a little bit so um just all of a sudden i'm no longer interested in it you know it's just uh that's it walk away from it 
Well, that's the trouble. You have to have a good eye. To me, I, I don't mind mechanical stuff need, uh, needing done. I can do, you know, most of that all myself. Uh, number one thing is that it's a strong, a sound structure to begin with. Uh, that one failed. This one failed. He did say that other coachman up there that we looked at. He said it's gonna, also going to be for sale whenever, when it gets around to it. But you know, but, but uh, I don't care if it is straight. I think it does have a desirable floor plan. You know, it's just got some rust on the hood, and uh, that's just yeah, that's kind of the line I draw. I, I don't want to do that either. So, pretty cool cars, though, huh? <laughs> All right, well, a little bit educational anyway, right? What did we learn today, girl? <laughs> so we've traveled a stretch of uh, Route 22 here for about 20 miles, and uh, Lens is really the only place that I've spotted any. And I, I didn't plan on dedicating the entire day to into RV shopping, uh, but. I gotta tell you, I'll tell you this though, that I kind of categorize these RVs in the three main groups. Uh, a fourth one would be the really older ones. But I mean, you know, the first 10 years, what's this? Uh, the 2022s are out. So 10 year old would be a 2012. You know, from new to up to 10 years old, they are still just, they are a fortune. They are a fortune. So, you know, uh, the previous 10 years, so from 2012 back to 2002, they're, you know, they're still new enough that, you know, they more modern stuff and uh, they're still really, really pricey for me. <laughs> they're, still, they're still a fortune. Sometimes you'll find a cheaper one, but, but you know, up to 20 year old, you know, basically, um, if you find a cheap one, there's a reason. There's, there's ones that have been neglected and they, some of them, you know, they're old enough that they have some terrible water damage. Somebody neglected the roof, just didn't keep up with things. And um, so, you know, the third group, you know, from 20, 2002 to 1992, I even stretched that back into the late 80s. You know, from 20 to 35 years old, we'll say. Now, a lot of those, the price, there's a significant a very significant price drop Two miles. Take the stop. John Road, uh, US East. in this third group one reason is um they're just a lot of people shy away because oh that's old it's probably uh you know that sort of thing or uh, the interior's dated they have colors like mauve and and um teal and <laughs> you know the late 80s early 90s was good for that but you know, a lot of, so they're not as desirable um, just cause they're dated and old. Well, they're not a piece of fresh fruit. So, I mean, um, but I'm gonna tell you, there are still some very, very good survivors out there of that old, if you don't mind the dated look. I mean, you go, and I've seen them on Marketplace. Um, I haven't seen any in this area, so I would have to travel for. There's two that are very good candidates that were up in uh, Michigan and Wisconsin, which I was just there to a week and a half ago, but you know, I wasn't looking. So I, you know, to find what I want, which is probably gonna be an early to mid nineties model, uh, it's, you know, gonna have the probably the four-speed transmission, which is gonna be better on gas mileage, uh, and uh, I don't know. Like I say, I'm still okay with late '80s, early '90s. There, there are good survivors out there that. Those are more of my price range. You know, without taking on some massive debt. I forgot, and just very quickly, uh, I forgot to include that fourth group which would have been early 80s and back into the 70s and you know those are just older rvs that it was rare i don't know how often you'd see uh, uh the class c that came with a generator or it was even optional or even a roof air conditioner 
so I, there are even some of those that are around that are still um, was well taken care of obviously not as not as many the older you go the fewer there are but those are out there too um, but yeah I don't think I go yeah I want the air conditioner or the generator so we're going with group three we'll be back okay we're back to the garage uh, it's supposed to rain the rest of the day so we're, we're, we're done out shopping um, this video got a little bit longer than I thought, uh, quicker than I thought, so there, there's something I wanted to include, but it's going to have to go to the next, we'll do that in the next video. Some of you that like to send me links to, uh, you know, different RVs and different deals out there, um, let's, let's hold off till next video, because there's are some very specific things I'm looking for, and, uh, more related to the floor plan plus the things i've mentioned in this video so i'm going to concentrate on that from the beginning of the next video you know the floor plan i'm looking for it's, it's very important to me and um yeah and some of the other stuff so yeah we'll do that in the next video hold off for, the, for those of you that like to do that um i do appreciate you kind of looking around the web and seeing what's maybe in your area or that sort of thing um we'll, we'll get to that soon We'll wrap this one up. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.